In a world full of movie podcasts, here is one more. Welcome to Defend Your Movie with Sean Donnelly and Andrew Fiore. The time has come again. The champion must And welcome to another episode of your favorite podcast and mine. I am one of your co-hosts, Andrew Fiore. With me, as always, is my adorable co-host, Sean Donnelly. Hello there, my friend. Hello there, Defenders. Thank you so much for listening to the show. Uh, we really appreciate it. Andy, how are you, my friend? Good. Good to see you. It's good to see you. We are joined by a super funny comic this week. I've known her for years. One of my faves. She performs all over the place. You know, VH1, all the stuff. Chelsea White, ladies Chelsea. and gentlemen. So Guys, upset. oh my gosh, that warmed my heart. No You're problem. also two of my favorites, who I've known for years. Also, Aww. can I just point out, I loved when you greeted your listeners and called them Defenders. Yeah. So your listeners like have... Have a fandom. They have we a do. fan yeah. army name. They they identify as defenders. Yes, this yes. Is a big and the defenders deal. are so great. They will. Shawnee and I will always say, you know, we're very personable. You talk to us on social media. But now people have been coming out to shows. Like we have, <gasps> we did the Cellar Vegas, and we had a defender come out. She said, "Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm a defender. defender." We have to, people come up and go, "Hey, I'm a defender," and, and we, it makes my day. It's this really is super so sweet. special. I'm saying that when the, I mean, I don't. I hope you know it doesn't sound like I'm saying it like ironically. Being no, like, no. This is super fucking cool. It's cool, right? It's I a love fun it. podcast. We I love, love it. doing it. And we had she brought a sweet potato out for us because we told people what it was. Where, where we get it from? Because oh, stupid Greg Stone and Brendan and those guys they say if you bring out a tomato or something, we'll sign it, right? Yeah, like, something <laughs> dumb like sing, that. Bring it, whatever. So we do a section on the podcast when you, we get down to the actual battle of the two movies. We call it the meats and the peats, the meats and the potatoes of the meats podcast. And so we say, hey, as a joke to make fun of Greg, we're like, bring us a potato, we'll sign the. potato. Potato, and she brought, <laughs> yeah. she brought uh, a um, a, what you call it, a, a sweet potato. That's all well she could find, and she had a great matchup. She just sent us a message, yes, on Instagram, and she had a pretty great matchup that maybe we'll, we'll talk about later on. But thank you so much for doing this. Oh my gosh, thanks so much for having me. You uh, you brought up some great movies before you were like Singing in the Rain, which is one of my favorites. Oh, I mean, number one, probably. It's so hard to pick a number one, as I'm sure everyone knows, but that's definitely top three. And then least. out of your picks, we thought of a great. A a great matchup that we'll talk about later on, but Andy, you have a what you watched this week, so let's go to that. Yes, uh, you were, by the way, thinking of Ashley, our defender from Vegas, who brought Ashley, the sweet potato, yes. and yeah. Uh, yeah, she'll hit us up with good matchups. But because uh, we got her, we met her, and we were like, she was so great. I think we were calling her Amy the whole time. And she oh, rushes no. like, hey, stupids. <laughs> My name's Ashley. Hey, you fucking morons. <laughs> I like that. I fuck with Ashley. Um, but last week, I watched a Jim Gaffigan film called Being Frank, and I watched another Jim Gaffigan film this week. Oh, he's doing a lot of movies right now. Uh, which is a very dramatic turn for him called American Dreamer. Oh. And oh, yeah, okay. He's been, if you're a fan of Jim Gaffigan, you follow him on his social media, like, been really pushing it. It's on. It's in limited select theaters and on video on demand which yeah. I watch it at home what's, what's Did like you the log the, line what's like the I don't know what that would be but it's basically he plays a kind of washed up or down on his luck would be a better phrase uh, dad who uh, has a restraining order against like his wife oh. and he can't really see his son so he uh, is driving uh, Uber oh I know about this I saw the trailer for this yeah and he's broke and uh, just things aren't going his way and it's kind of f- Fucking it's a interesting story, and uh, he it's takes cring- up it's cringe-inducing, right? Kind of a side work, side gig of driving around a drug dealer who gives him like two hundred bucks a day just to take him, just you know, be his driver because that would be that's like a good cover, you know, if they have cops ever pull him yeah. over. So I have just Random driving this guy dude. in an Uber, yeah. yeah. And uh, he gets an idea in his head to kidnap the drug dealer's son and hold him ransom, like kidnapping plot. Oh, my God. And I don't want to give any more spoilers away, but uh, I liked it. It was fun to see Gaffigan in that type of role. I didn't love it, but it was it moved quickly and uh, had, a dec- had a very uh, good twist I didn't see coming at all. Really? Oh. Yeah, where I was like, ooh, okay. I didn't see that coming. Do you know who directed it? I don't know who directed it. 
And, and how was everything? How was the, the, the writing? Cast the, was good. Yeah, all the other actors, uh, the drug dealer's girlfriend. I just looked her name up, and I can't remember remember it. Uh, she was great. Um, it was the story. Like it kept, was, it kept it you involved. Did it keep you involved? Did you want to turn it off at some point? Or were you like, I'll stick through it? No, or were you like, it was an hour and a half. It, it flew by. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you're, like, I wouldn't probably go out and see it in the theater, but I, I, I watched like, it at home on Sunday. I had nothing else to do. I like and, a good kidnapping movie. I love the movie Ransom. That's like, Ransom's that's yeah. a great that's like, movie. That might be top 25. That's, that, that sounds crazy. Maybe top 50. <laughs> you know what Give I love? Give me back my son. A good version, of, a good movie, which I love, is... The We're Stranded, and this is some weird backwoods town, and it might be a cult, mm. we don't know movie. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like Breakdown. Yes. You watch Breakdown? Jack Noseworthy's in it. Like, the guy I was like, never seen Breakdown. Uh, Kurt Russell, and I forget the woman's name in it, but they're literally just like a kind of a yuppie, not yuppie, but like just kind of a waspy couple that's driving through the country, and they... Uh, this they break down and J T Walsh. Uh, remember J T Walsh, great character actor. He's in Pleasantville. He plays the town mayor in Pleasantville, but he's been in a I bunch of stuff. Care. He could play friendly old you know guy, or he a lot of the time he played bad guy. And in this, J T Walsh or M M at Walsh? No, M M at Walsh is from the Coen Brothers movies. Yeah, he's older. He's in Music of Chance. He's in. Uh, I bet um, Ashley would know who this guy is. <laughs> she probably would. <laughs> no, J T Walsh is. He's been in a bunch of stuff. Anyway. And so what happens? They break down. He's a truck driver. He picks them up. He picks up the the the, tie, the wife goes. Oh, I'll go get help. You wait here with the car, and then then Kurt Russell's waiting around, waiting around. Oh, nothing's, of course, nothing's happening. Yeah, you'll know him oh, once you see him. Yeah. yeah, he's dead now, but you'll that know him once you see him. Oh, no. uh, he died in ninety eight. Yeah, he died a long time ago. Oh, my God. I, you had told me he would have been alive today, and I would have been like, oh, yeah. well, he was young. I think how old was he? Fifty something. He was fifty four. Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. Scary. Wow. Any, anyway, so the wife. Goes with him in the truck. Then Kurt Russell's waiting around for a while. Nothing's going on. So he goes to the closest town and he finds these people. He's like, I'm looking for my wife, looking for my wife. Finally, he finds J.T. Walsh and he pretends like he has no idea what's going on. So it's just Kurt Russell trying to figure out what they did with the guy with, with his wife and he's freaking out. And then he finds very out. similar oh, to American yeah. Dreamer. Really, it's not the cult stuff, but I won't say anything more. Oh my but gosh, that's good. I'm intrigued if you're, especially if you're a Jim Gaffigan oh, fan. I think I just figured out what the twist is. Uh, all right, we'll talk after, all right, and I'll right. see if you can get it. <laughs> but uh, and then I had like a little disappointing piece of news because I don't know uh, where are you from, Chelsea. I'm from the Pittsburgh area, like okay. an hour and a half north of Pittsburgh. Uh, for some reason, I had New Jersey in my head, my home state, uh, and I've talked about this before on the podcast a couple years ago. I was in a documentary about this very famous, dangerous. Uh, amusement park called Action Park in North Jersey. Yes, yeah, yeah, of course. Everybody yeah, people Action have park. heard of it. Yeah, it, but nobody had it until this documentary like went viral overnight. Oh, I remember Action Park. So that's right, right, right where you grew up, right near where I grew up. And I was in the documentary because I had all these, you know, tall t- not tall tales, but stories Actual of going tales. there. Yeah, and just you know <laughs> getting killed on the rides and you know brutalized because that's what it was it was a very right. unsupervised just anything goes <laughs> type of the, place um, jackass what's jackass the, it, it was uh, called action oh point or whatever it was, was like based on it and they on that. didn't Wait, do it what's the guy Johnny Knoxville Johnny okay. Knoxville yes recently um, and to what I've heard it doesn't do it any justice but go watch the most uh, America's most dangerous water park uh, you can find it on YouTube and yeah, it's they shut great. it down in like the 90s yeah, yeah, closed in like ninety seven because somebody died. Many people died over the years. <laughs> <laughs> it was just one of many. So I, I was in remember. that documentary, and the director of that emailed me this summer, and he said, "Hey, man, we're gonna make a feature length out of this, <gasps> a feature length documentary." Wow! And I go, "Great." He's like, "Are you up? F- Want to you know tell your stories again?" I go, "Yeah, of course." Yeah, yeah. He emailed me yesterday. He goes, "So it turned out." It's really way too dark to have more than one comedian in. I'm sorry, man. We oh. had to cut everything out from you. I go, oh. oh he goes, but here's the trailer. Oh, really? So I guess go watch it, but you won't see me at all in it. <laughs> Who's the other comedian? Gethard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> New Jersey. Well, you lose that one, my friend. Exactly. Can you get uh, crippling anxiety in the next... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Gather like, yeah. like I didn't want to ride down the rides because I <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you like making jokes or it's just that you're a little bit more light like taking a he's well, dark you, comedy he, angle. he's very affable. I'm sure right. he told the stories like <laughs> right. Andy. Exactly. I would be the Am same way. Funny now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're being funny. <laughs> there it is. There's the Seinfeld <laughs> reference. Um so yeah, cut, just, just so you know, there's one Seinfeld reference per show I that we have that. cut yeah. from the movie. I but then it. I did watch the trailer, and it does they do the way they made it looks like it explored the really all the darker side rather than the fun loving 
danger side of it. It sure. was like, no, people died because of how bad the supervision was and the tea, you know, Even the alcohol. In Long Island, we knew about it. Like, yeah, the tri state area yeah. was legendary. And I remember this, this wasn't like a huge great adventure type thing. It was like a local, right. oh, yeah. you know, kind of. Yeah. yeah. And like they had all these rides. But I remember seeing the rides. I yeah. think I went there once when I was a kid. It had a can- it had a 360 cannonball loop, which was like <laughs> physically impossible. You should watch the Johnny Knoxville movie because it's crazy. After it's based we moved on my friends that. and I yeah. Googled it, yeah, to see like, we're like, oh, this can't really be. And the the rides that they were doing as like parodies of like, oh, stupid Johnny Knoxville making crazy unsafe rides. And then we Googled it and most of them were like almost the yeah. exact yeah. same yeah. rides in real life. Well, I remember one of the ones I actually went to, it might have been an action park or one of the other parks. Even the, the I went into one that had a, I think it might have been there, where it was just the dark tube that you went down. It was just a slide. But even that like shot you into the water so fast. Oh, yeah. I like almost drowned. The yeah. water was like uh, so cold. Like some guy had cardiac arrest from the sh- temperature of the water. It was like <laughs> well below, it was like in the 50s. There's How something. did they oh, do there was was just like Tarzan swings where you would just swing out and then you somebody yes. dropped and they'd, they'd like land on rocks. They was, that was always in the commercial. Somebody stepped on like a wire in the water and got electrocuted. Heads can cut like deaths. Like it used to be called class action park, traction park. How did it stay open <laughs> as long as it did? I, traction- good malpractice lawyers. Like, I don't know. It was a different time. Traction so, park. Yeah. That's great. So the title of the movie is class, is class action park. Wow. That's great. That's very cool. But I mean, uh, yeah, cool, I guess go see it. Well, yeah, well, also, it's like I don't think we've ever climbed to fame by being in documentaries. It would have been being nice to show my parents. You know? Oh yeah, right. Because my parents, my dad especially, would I would like. I, it would have been a fun. Did he take down memory lane? Your dad? My dad, yeah. You my did. my dad was always the. The water park guy. Oh, he was okay. That's my funny. mom would just. Sit but wait, in the... it wasn't just. I thought they had other. Was it fully a water park? It I was mean, a had... ski mountain in the winter. It, they turned it into a small ski mountain. But they had like Vernon other Valley. rides other than water rides, right? Or not very. Yeah. Many. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They right. had it was like a full, okay. it, not like roller coasters. They had like the first bungee jump I ever saw. They yeah. had the Alpine yeah. slide was the big yes. one, which is like they the do that handbrake the yeah. uh-huh. cart you well, ride the, on. Uh-huh. The one that I forget where it was. I think it's also in Jersey. Remember they had Great Adventure too. Remember that's exit seven A off the New Jersey Turnpike. <laughs> that's south. Any of, Jersey kid knows that commercial yeah. in those directions by heart. That's, that's way south, south. That's way yeah down more of the shore. It's still around. No. Oh yeah, yeah. Great adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember there. That's the one where they said the girl, her hair got <gasps> caught. Yeah, from oh, free God, fall. I can't. Yeah, no, from stop. free fall. Yep. Oh, and then she no, her scalp ripped no. off her scalp. That was the one where you oh, put I a can't. you'd put a quarter on your knee. Did you ever do that? And no. The gravity would it? raise the quarter up. Did, it, did you do it? Yeah, I did it a million times. Yeah. Yeah. It was you know the free fall. Yeah. Her hair got caught. Oh, I heard that story uh, I mean, I mean it's not really happened. Stroke, just thinking about it and that's a fun like, uh, action park was worse than <laughs> yeah. that to give you an idea of how bad it was if you guys that's a crazy Wikipedia uh, like a uh, that's a cra- you can go down a YouTube wormhole just like typing in uh, action, uh, adventure park uh, uh, accidents <laughs> it's like you'll see some fucked up shit oh that video of it oh parks all over the country I mean all those sorts of like oh roller coaster god, accidents man. and stuff like that oh my god yeah I saw uh, first of all I, I do want to talk about this I don't know if we'll get off on a tangent but I don't know what, how you guys feel about it one I'll go I'll say I sent it to you and Justin Smith the trailer for oh, un- yeah, I didn't uncut, watch it yet. uncut gems is uncut gems is, is that what it's called yeah yeah, it's like oh, an, an Adam Sandler movie, a New York based movie. He plays he's like a cranking him out. He's putting a lot of stuff out right now. Yeah, and he it looks good though. I think it looks good. Okay, uh, R.G. Daniels was online. I think kind of shitting on it, but not that that matters. You know, but it's something we know. And that, like, you know what's so funny? Your universe becomes whoever's on your Facebook feed. Oh, so when I read a post, I'm like, come on. <laughs> That's like my articles that I read. You know. <laughs> But I he, think Joe Vesey is working on all those Adam Sandler films. I think he is. Yeah, buddy of yeah. Ours. Comic Joseph Vesey. Yeah, I think he uh, he mentioned that he's been. I think he writes on him or he punches him up or something. Like he does something. New York sports fans would know his dad. His dad is uh, Peter Vesey, sports writer. Oh, really? For the yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Anyway, so uh, the trailer looks freaking great. I don't know if he's on this one though. This is this isn't a comedy. I don't know. This is like. Kind of indie looking. Uh, he plays like a gambling, uh, like, a, like like kind of like a gambling addict. I, if it's Happy Madison, I think that's Joe. I don't think it's Happy Madison. It's not ah, Happy Madison. Gotcha. Yeah. Anyway, and then also, what, which we don't, we didn't really mention the show that thus far, the Breaking Bad movie. Yeah. Anybody have wow. opinions? I saw the new with just uh, Jesse sitting in his car on the and listening there's to the a, radio. There's one after that. From oh, yesterday. I didn't see that one. There's one where it, like it shows clips of Jesse in, in different. 
parts of what's going on in the movie. They show them by a lake. They show uh, at the end shows, and I'm not. There's not spoilers because I don't know what were the movie. Were you Breaking about. Bad fan, Chelsea? I was just going to ask if you guys were big Breaking Bad fans. I've never seen. Uh, oh, it maybe it's my great. top. It's I'll top my, two of I'll all time. It's, it's one. It's one, it's, one, it's like one A and one B. Well, that's why I feel like it's just been intimidating. I didn't get in in the beginning, and then every season you're like, I'm going to go back and I'm going to get in, and then it just gets overwhelming. <laughs> I remember somebody telling me like they watched the pilot, and like I couldn't get into it. I'm like the pilot's one of the most exciting things there is. Yeah, it's out of, right I away do it at this point. I mean, yeah. how many? Yeah. Isn't it like tw- twenty seven? Oh, it's so worth it. It's worth no, it's six. Okay, you're gonna oh. jump and it's and it and it moves. It's, it and moves. resolves itself. It's a nice closure. Yeah, you it's might have, great. You might have sold me on this. Yeah, okay. oh. but now they have the movie and they show. I'm like, I won't give you any info, but they show different clips of the movie. But there's the, one of the trailers is uh, Jesse one in the car. I saw that one too. Yeah. So it's one of. The, and you're not gonna remember what this means, but because uh, you're gonna be watching it, you know, this is gonna be down the line. You sure. better watch it. I I'll think less of you, Chelsea, you if you don't. <laughs> But I think it looks. I, the one, the one trailer where they have the guy in the uh, police station and he's telling them like, "You guys dropped the ball." I know you, you, you just let him, you know, be held captive and you know all this. Uh, Did I see that one with Badger and he's being interviewed? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That one I didn't like, but the other ones I'm like, it looks pretty good. They put, I gotta they, watch the new one. They put depressing music on it. It looks pretty badass. I can't wait. I can't wait. To, it comes out October 11th. I can't wait to watch. You got it. Got a lot of good stuff coming out. Irishman's gonna be here before you know it. Wait, is that that's the end of October, right? Yeah. Oh, big big month. We should do a. We should do a Scorsese episode and then talk about that as well. You know what we should do one day? If we have some local defenders, we'll have to do a big movie viewing. We'll all have a defender meetup. Ooh! That's so fun. Well, yeah. You guys Wouldn't have that be to fun? do this. You know what? Yeah. Let's start, let's start the planning for that now. Defenders, email us. Defendyourmovie at gmail.com. Oh Obviously, you'd have to come to us. It's a, a you know, yeah. local. Meet and greet. Yeah, well, Defender we've done Mixer. the live show. We've done the live Defend Your Movie, which we're going to do another one. We did one in last November for like a Halloween theme. So, and we had a great turnout. It was a great turnout. But the podcast is growing bigger, and we've always get yeah. invited more, more defenders. defenders have to meet and greet. So, yeah, absolutely. So, and what yeah. better uh, activity than to go see a movie? Yes. Yeah, awesome. So, send us an email on that. Let, let, let's, let's, get, let's gauge the gauge level the of interest. Uh, defendyourmovie at gmail.com Let us know if you, Are you a local Tri-state area defender? Do you want to come Check it out? We'll set it up We'll, we'll get Absolutely We'll get, a, we'll get some we'll popcorn We'll get some sodas that. We'll hang out We'll watch one of the, We'll watch a famous we'll, Yeah we'll put it to a vote We'll watch a movie That we, we talk about a lot on the, on the show maybe Maybe we'll do that Maybe yeah. it'll be a, Maybe it'll be a good fellows watch We'll maybe go to Sean's be, house Yeah <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a podcast about Pretty Little Liars, and I would like if people were local and were like, "Oh my god, I wish I could come watch Pretty Little Liars with you." I'd be like, "Come the fuck over, let's do this." Yeah, I'd we can do it in a number of ways. Strangers to my home. Maybe we do <laughs> one grand prize Pretty winner comes over to my house and we watch the breaking. You know, it doesn't have to. You know, oh, we could do a meetup. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. Uh, all right, now would you like to get to the meats and the potatoes? Let's get to the meats and the peats. <laughs> <laughs> we got some imaging working on that. Uh, we're gonna have a little jingle made up. Oh my god! I love a jingle. I love a sound effect. <laughs> you know, you it's going to be very uh, like old school movie sounding. Um, <laughs> what you call it? Uh, yeah. So today the matchup is we were talking about. Uh, we asked Chelsea what what movie she's passionate about. She brought up one that I like a lot, but we were trying to figure out what we can match it up against, and uh, we decided on party movies. Uh, these two party movies can't hardly wait, which is from 1998, and uh, Animal House. Which is from like the nineteen, which is legendary and from the sixties. Nineteen seventy-eight. Nineteen is it seventy-eight? Takes place, it takes in, the place 60s. in the sixties. Uh, now here's the thing, man. I'm, a couple things I want to say first. I want us to talk about what makes uh, the, the what makes a great party movie. I think I think that there, after a while, there's so many of these things that like there's tropes they use that right. really make a great party movie. Secondly. The reason why I think that, I think we're getting a lot of shit for this matchup because people are going to be like Animal House, you're crazy. It's Animal House, but I got to be honest, man. Really, I think generational wise, people that are our age might a lot more might go for Can't Hardly Wait because it like it speaks to their generation more. All right, people older than us, people that went to college in the same. <laughs> He's years. skeptical. Well, from no, the not job. me. I, not I, him. I'm defending he, Animal House. He's basically a time traveler. He, this kid should have been born. <laughs> 1947, and then he would have been, you know, 1950 something. I the 70s is my favorite decade, but I, I'm well on the record for stating that the 70s is the best decade for movies. You love that era of yeah, right, exactly, and you love that style of movie, like that whole world, that Caddyshack world, that National Lampoon's world. Like you love that. Yeah, and that's. I mean, I was eight. I was 19 in 98, so I, I I remember going to see Can't Hardly Wait in the movies twice. Yeah. Uh, because I went once with my friends, and then a girl who I had a crush on for so long that summer, uh, Christy Torres, 
we she got home. Oh, she was Latin a great ahead of me, <laughs> and she came home from college. And she was like, hey, do you want to hang out? I was like, yeah, let's, do you want to go to the movies? And she was like, oh, I'm dying to see Can't Let Heart, How Do They Wait? Did you see it? I was like, no, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been yeah. meeting you, so this is perfect. <laughs> and so I remember not really loving it the first time I saw it. And the second time, I'm like, uh, yeah, no, it's <laughs> great. <laughs> Rascals. Now, let me ask you this. Part of the reason you might not like it to this day, does anything happen with, with Taurus? She never became my girlfriend or anything. We might have kissed a little, little, little right. smooshy. We okay. became actually good pals because I ended up going to Villanova where she went. Oh, she okay. became like She became a friend of mine, yeah. It, okay. No romance. Okay. So I thought, maybe, I thought maybe her reaction to you on that oh, date might have dictated God, why wait. you might not like Can't Hardly Wait. No. I'm. I went for a, a date. I saw from dusk till dawn in the movies like five times because I just friends kept wanting to go see it. And one of those times I went was because the date was like this girl I was really into who was like married with kids now. Uh, she wanted to go see it, and we went to Roosevelt Field Mall in Long Island. Yes. and we went to see, yeah. and it was like we got dropped off, and, and it was like so I love it. I, lo- I used to love going to the mall, go to the movies. Oh, was, that's all I, I did. Of course, it was well, the best. All there was did, to so do was Chelsea bring, bring us back to ninety eight. What your oh experience? My gosh, nineteen ninety eight is also just such like a um, moment in time for me because that's when me and all my friends were like getting our driver's licenses I think I have a feeling for some reason in my head that's why because it was like a new sure. level that's of big, independence yeah. you know so it's any songs from that era are very oh, yeah. in my mind because you have the radio on you're driving around any movies from that area because uh, era because we could finally like go and uh, drive to the movies but yeah it's just like I was in 10th grade. <laughs> yeah, so my life that makes Pennsylvania. a difference, I think. Well, it was a, exactly. So it's like a very uh, specific time, impressionable absolutely. time, maybe, or like a, a time when you go back. I feel like nostalgia is going to be stronger for that sort of Yeah, that was, I, that was the summer I graduated time. high school. You're like basically it's ta- a big year for me. You're basically telling yourself, like, I could live this. Yes. Yeah. It's like the next threshold Agreed. of, like, I guess you had the same thing, but you just didn't have the same experience with the movie. Correct. I mean, was it a girl? Was it more of a girl movie than a guy movie? You think? I think so. Well, I don't. I, I don't like the whole. Well, here's the thing. I don't think it's a. I don't. Humor. See, yeah, but and I don't see it as a party movie. What? I see it as the, the kid who was trying to get a. Yeah, I know. But. He's trying to get this girl. No, but it takes the the back set is. It's also Ethan Embry. You ever see Ethan Embry later in life? Oh my god, he's like <laughs> yeah. off. He's his like rocker a little. I think you, so. Did you follow him on Twitter? He's in an episode of Criminal Intent where he's like gained a bunch of weight. He's like kind of stocky after a while. He's balding and he plays this dude that's like he plays like a murderer, but he's really creepy in it. Like he just plays this guy got abused his whole life, so he starts like killing people with a rifle. It's like really creepy. He's got a lot. I take back what I said about being off your rock, his rocker I don't think that's true but he's just like, I mean, he plays it fast and loose on Twitter he's got a lot of opinions and he which I mean I suppose I agree with most of them but he's just like kind of he's really put himself out there and he and said that he doesn't remember hardly anything about taping it that he famously said that back during the anniversary which I guess would have been last year would have been the 20th anniversary taping can hardly wait he said he can barely remember because he smoked so much pot so there's he can like look up all these interviews where he talks about like oh man I can remember almost wow. nothing about it. I think he had some other little juicy bombshells I can't remember right now. He's in a, uh, Google it. Get back to us. He's in a he's got a small part in the Amazon show called Sneaky Pete with oh, Giovanni Ribisi. Was he still like kind of kind of a stocky dude? No, he looks normal. He looks like he's a skinny. grown up version of his character oh, in Wait. Uh, yeah, he, he. I think he was like something was going on. He was drinking or something. Not a bad show. I just I kind of lost interest in. The I heard Sneaky season. Pete's good. Here's the thing. He was a heartthrob for like three years, like yeah. around the the Empire well, Records, you, uh, and, yeah, yeah. and 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 then that and this came that out. That thing you do, I'm sorry. And that thing he, you do, yeah. exactly. He was like a big deal. And then he didn't. Yeah, I mean, did he even do much after the late '90s? Did he have another? No, I think it's kind of fell off. Heartthrobby thing. Oh my gosh, you know who? This just popped in my head. I saw this guy on a commercial. I think it was this morning during the Today Show or something. Uh, the guy who plays the klepto kid. Yes, he's like in a commercial he, he for plays, in, yes. insurance. And I he's know exactly that who you're talking about. Like trying to drag race. It's like yes. State Farm Insurance yes. or something. He's trying to drag race. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Come on, bro. Come so, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's so funny. Oh I God, saw that too. Klepto kid, you're out here. He's so, in a bunch of stuff. That kid. He's also in American Pie. And oh, he's right, in, right. Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing for me. I, Animal House is a generational movie. Whereas I come, I would but never. It's your consider. generation. My, I your think generation. Can't hardly wait is a generational movie. It's my generation you too. Don't, you don't think can't hardly wait is no, a generational movie? No, not in the way. Not, it didn't become. Oh, it's, it's, it's gen- all right. Cr- how about this cross generational movie? Whereas oh, uh, people, sure. Oh, I mean, it's beloved. Yes. What you know, Animal House? Yeah. I think that is certainly cross generational. Like, I don't, I don't you know. Say that about kids can't today are wait. like discovering. You can't. I mean, there's. But if you came up with it, like if it was of your era, I mean, I can't. 
uh, the scenes, the quotes, the acting. I mean, did I already lose in defending my movie that I agreed that Animal <laughs> yeah. House is cross generational? Well, well you, no, because what you can do is this: you, you can, can relent honest, points. You're saying is it, this is what I mean. I think the time of that is almost done because of what's everything that's old now. People like aren't paying attention to it anymore. Yeah. It's really it's sad. It's crazy. To it's think really it's, sad. Can't hardly wait. It was 21 years ago. I know. That's, 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 that's yeah. Me. yeah. But here's the thing, man. Like, like, can't hardly wait. Actually, I don't even know if that holds up and all. I don't know if people, oh, younger I, people watch something like I that. I watched it like a month ago. Because they, yeah. you know, young young people that are like in the, like in high school now, like they're not like like how. Oh, like they're the not probably, watching these old movies, being like, "Oh, it's an well, old movie, but I still can get into it." I, I, when I was in high school, I would have watched Animal House and been like, "I can get into it because the people that are in it are big stars and they're can really I funny." Can I make a point? I tend to agree with you, and I fought this for so long, but I feel like Shawnee is right because here's the thing: when we were growing up, not to make it a when we were growing up story, but it kind of <laughs> has a means to an end. Sure. We did. We had tapes. And you couldn't get anything at your fingertips. Right. So whatever was on TV you were stuck with or whatever you had in your grasp, that's what you watched, which was Animal House for me and a lot of movies like that. Up until what? Maybe 10 years ago, you could just go, I want to watch Can't Hardly Wait right now, and you can make it happen. Yeah. Right. Young kids, maybe, let's say, graduating high school. Now don't need to do that research of like oh I can go back and watch like because that's what I love doing I right. would go to the video store and go I want to watch this I, right. so I oh I, yeah I see all this so let's walk around the aisle you don't like, need to do that gonna... anymore well, because whatever you want to watch you can just watch it whenever you that want that's true, literally but on your phone here's counterpoint and I don't know for a fact that kids are discovering Can't Hardly Wait or some of these older movies but. Um, I do know I have to do a lot like, learn about Generation Z for my job I work in like TV and digital video and the research shows that Generation Z who is like the oldest Generation Z is like give or take like 2021 20, right now like college age and younger they are nostalgic already for the time when we were growing up of just like 20 years ago they're obsessed with like friends yeah, then I'm wrong they're then. obsessed with like friends and they're obsessed with like like uh, the research shows that they want to like they watch something like I mean friends is the example sticking with it they watch friends and they're like oh my god I wish I could live in a time when like the guy I like would show up at my house well, I wish I lived in time without social media it's so see, stressful I, heard it's so the other I think that they would like be into the fact that can't hardly wait is so in, encapsulated in that you know moment. What? It's probably split. I mean, yeah. there's probably the kids who like us who are you know obsessive comedy or movies right. fans or whatever put in the effort to go and research. Like, hey, I just saw a movie by uh, I just saw Goodfellas. I'm going to go watch something else by right. Scorsese. Right. Like that's what I would do. That's I would then go. There, oh, yeah. I have to go see Taxi Driver right. and I, et cetera, et cetera. Right. I bet there's. It's, I bet it's probably a 60, 40, 50, sure. 50 split of people totally. who just want to, want to, you know, are interested and go do the work and put in the yeah. time to watch. But didn't they? Wasn't there a whole, fans wasn't of. there a thing online? This is you know you see the thing you know these these articles about this is problematic. Like people people are rewatching Friends and it's problematic. Okay, oh, well, of course. I mean that's the fifty percent yeah. in twenty nineteen. Well, they have tons <laughs> they of... Really, it's funny the attitudes that change because there's there's literally a lot of things in Friends where they're like, the idea of being gay, they they really... Like, the joke is, you're being gay. Like, well, you're being right, a gay right. person. That's like in... I guess I'm not defending my movie anymore. I still love it as a <laughs> beloved 1998 classic. But yeah, I just rewatched it because I saw Booksmart a few months ago. Yeah. Which is similar to Camera. Good party movie. Just yeah. Yeah. It's it's party very movie. much a good, good like uh, analogy. And super bad. Yeah. It's very similar. Yep. Superman, absolutely. So I saw Booksmart and it made me nostalgic for Can't Hardly Wait. So I went home and, and watched it. I like on-demanded it or whatever. Like, paid $5 for it. And yeah, it's... I mean, I love it so much, but it, the entire plot is trying to get the football player to people to think he's gay. It's like that's the entire like, oh, that's the worst thing. Smart. Like so homophobic and problematic. Um, <laughs> and they- Andy's like smart comedy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like, I mean, I could go on. I was at the time like live texting my friend. There was literally like twenty or twenty five things that I was like, oh my god. And then did you remember that this happened? Because it's so shocking. Twenty years later, like the homophobia yeah. and the misogyny and wow. you know, it's just it's wild. I mean, that you can. Multiply that by 10 well, about Animal House. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's wow. I was going to say could be a reason. I mean, can't hardly wait. You know, you it think? has its problems, but Animal House. Devises which, a plot I from mean, a dead girl. To get. It's another level of exactly. So it's like, this, like our and kids today. And you think you get free dates from my know, friends? Woke. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to make me a pot. <laughs> Fawn Leibowitz. 
<laughs> Fondly avoids it. He goes, I don't think I should be alone tonight. She's like, all right, I'll get my coat. Can you get three more dates for my friends? <laughs> <laughs> but but <laughs> Animal House, like... You know, what we, we can say, we, maybe that should be the maybe that should be the point of the thing. Whichever movie is less problematic, that's the one that wins. <laughs> yeah. Because they have the one. There's that line in Animal House where they're at the the, the, the black nightclub and and they have uh, Otis Day in the Night. Otis Day in the Night, which which was a real band after the movie, and they would tour around. It's Otis, it's Otis, he my man. Us. He goes, he goes, Otis, my man. He's like whatever. But when they're at the actual club, they're being intimidated, and those guys are like, "You mind if we dance with your dates or whatever it is?" There's a part. Where the girl's talking to one of the guys from the, from the Animal House, and he's like, she goes, so what are you studying? And she goes, Prim- Prim- primitive cultures. And then they have one of the guys from the band going, up, 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 ooh, ma, ma. I'm like, oh, my oh God. shit, that's bad. Even when I think I watched it as a kid, I was like, that's kind of that's fucked up. Fucked I think up. that's this flounder sitting next I mean. to these three thuggish guys. So where do you go to school? <laughs> Also, let's, oh, please don't say thuggish. Listen, uh, the I'm, they're big guys. But the other thing is, <laughs> my favorite, the best uh, flounder thing goes, Mr. F- what, what's his real name in real life? In the, what's his actual name? Not Dorfman. Uh, Fred Dorfman. Fred Dorfman. Mr. Dor- uh, Fred Dorfman. He goes, hello. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> Hello. 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 This is now like, which movie is more problematic? But we were a little bit oh, saying clearly. offline in Can't Hardly Wait. Um, and I think we're divided on our opinion on this. I was like just mouth agape, like horrified that they say the N word and can't hardly wait. And it is used in a negative cut. Co- like they're trying to make the point that like, By hey, white white, kids. Like, you know, By don't use word. yes. And like Seth, right. Seth the Green and his the time, friends the that are trying to be yeah. like, exactly. And then one of Seth, Seth Green characters, uh, Kenny Fisher's friends. Uh, is like, oh, what's up? And it says the N word to this group of black guys, and then they chase him down to like beat his ass. Which okay, but just even the fact that they that he says, that it. He says it was just shocking to me. But <laughs> to I think hear, that's, like, I just I don't know. I, I was well, we were talking about it before the before we started taping. I think that is hypersensitivity. I'm not saying you're wrong. I think yeah. I think I also would react that way because of what's going on now. Even something that shows you him saying that and, and making getting the point that like they're making the point that he's an up. idiot, he's a goofball, yeah. and they're getting chased anyway for saying it even now that wouldn't be in anything because you can't even utter yeah the, and he doesn't say the word he says with an a at the end and he's supposed to be like hey i'm cool i'm, I'm yeah. with you guys like even that like that should be allowed to happen if you're showing like hey you that, idiot now you get your ass kicked it's, yeah. it's, it's, that's why it was funny because they're yeah. like you're a moron and you're gonna get well, maybe punched you, now you might have the way you articulated it actually might shed light on why i had that reaction because it is even though they're like okay yes now we're gonna beat you up and that's a fucked up thing to do it's the whole movie is lighthearted and it's portrayed trade and it's like it's shot like bright colors and this and very like affable yeah. and the fact that you said oh they're showing that this guy's a goofball it's like yeah they kind of are but it's so much it's like they shouldn't be being like this goofy guy let's beat his ass like it's way oh, more oh, oh. do you know what i mean it's, well, like, it's like they're yeah, they that, are that was a also bit part like, of the back um, then like making it people getting beat up was like part like well, funny right, part of the but movie. it's like just exa- i feel like he is supposed to come off as like oh this goofy kid who doesn't know you shouldn't say the n-word and it's like that's completely like minimalizing <laughs> what a like a slur does i don't know i mean that just um <laughs> It was yeah. just a shocking thing to hear. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was very jarring. I know what you mean because it'd be, it'd be it'd be shocking for me too. I was just like, I can't believe. I think we that have to. I, I think we have to go movie. to back to the battle between the two movies. I, I'm actually on the fence because I, the more that no, you're not. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. I think I think Animal House probably edges it out for me, but 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 I, but I will say that we got Jennifer Love Hewitt though over here. Uh, both there you go. You both movies. About, Springboarded casts. Yeah, there's Which so many people better, in Cowardly Wait. There's, there's so, so many, many people, people in Cowardly Wait, and there's so many people in Animal House. Yeah. So you just go. Oh. Uh, maybe more relevant would be Cannon Harley Wait. I'll give it that because even though there's guys you'd known about forever, they weren't like movie stars. Really, you know, you had uh, well, a, lot of, a lot of characters. I mean, actors. well. Yeah, Meyer, Kevin Donald Bacon, but better actors in Animal House. Like Peter Rieger is awesome. Peter Rieger, yeah, Peter um, Rieger's great. Tom Hulse is Tom Hulse. Like, right? Yeah. He's what pro- happened to Tom Hulse? I know. And there must be a story behind Amadeus. that. I did Amadeus, but I mean, like, then he ended up doing like the voice of like Brave Little Toaster, and that's and that's it. And, <laughs> I, and I think he's just like still doing that stuff. Iconic. But I don't think I think if he wanted to act, he could act. He was a good actor. Yeah. He's great in Parenthood. He's great in Amadeus. He's great in this. He's, you know, whatever it is. 
It was God laughing at so me. They should do an Animal House, Can't Hardly Wait, like, crossover. <laughs> But with all original cast, <laughs> I don't know. That's a pretty Hollywood. They all just be old. Flesh it out. <laughs> well, also because Chris, is Chris, Chris Klein's not in, in Can't Hardly Wait, right? No, but, he's in American Pie. American Pie. But that was. But nice. Jerry O'Connell's those... in Can't Hardly Wait. He plays mm, uh, Trip tri- tri- McNeely. Trip McNeely. <laughs> and I was going to sketch on the Jerry O'Connell show. Name drop. Name drop. Name drop. <laughs> <laughs> nice guy. It's so crazy. I met Jerry O'Connell doing that sketch on his show. You look into his eyes and you see the kid from Stand By Me. You oh see the shape of his face and you're like, oh, it's the kid from Stand By Me. Did you get me. emotional? I, a little bit. I got a little bit <laughs> taken aback. Yeah, I had a, I had a, uh, a sketch where I had to I had to massage him. So it was, oh that was kind God, of a thrill for sensual. Sean Donnelly. No, he's supposed to, yeah, supposed to be like a super <laughs> duper nice guy. My friend wrote on a on a show that he did for a little bit and said he's just like nice guy. At one point guy. we're doing it's just these like goofy sketches for a show. At one point he goes, Sean, you have any notes? I'm like, notes for what? <laughs> He meant for like the acting. I'm like, oh no, man! Like, I'm not gonna tell you how to act. You're a better actor <laughs> you're than me. You're tripping, Neil. And you're and you're yeah. This is your show, brother, brother. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I think overall quality of movie and look and everything. I think I had to go for Animal House. Can't hardly wait though. I have fun. I've seen Animal House more. I do have fun watching it. It kind of gives me the same feeling as... Oh, that's not even close. Come on. <laughs> it's <just> sickening. <laughs> Can't really wait. That just like hits you, you right there. You have fond memories of it. Animal House is a goddamn spot. classic. It's, but it's only a classic. Here's the thing. That, that's not what I'm trying to, to say. It's a classic to a lot of people. But it's that time is ending. I'm telling you. It's one of those yeah. things where isn't a classic if it's still not remembered as a classic? Like, it's classic to people... Okay, but you can say the same thing right. about Can't Hardly Wait. You go, I don't know if, I showed, if, a if you took an 18-year-old who's an 18-year-old today and you showed them both of those movies, which one do you think would win? General, genu- genuinely speaking. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. I think Can't Hardly Wait would win. I think so, too, because I, I think, because they, I think they would relate like more Animal to House it. House was, it was way too I'm, right, well, I'm going, going for Animal House. They're not a good judgment <laughs> See, you're an old curmudgeon. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I mean. Like, the sh- it's shifting. So it's one of those things where it's like, there's also certain things in Animal House that, like, I, like, I think I was told were funny, so I thought they were funny, but they weren't that funny. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but then you grow up and you go, that's hilarious. That's funny. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying there's things that go out of date. There's things that yeah. go out of date we can't hardly wait. There's things that, we mentioned Project X, which kind of goes along the line. Even Superbad, Jonah Hill went back and said he's sorry for doing Superbad because he didn't realize how much yeah, it was come on well that's it's happening Andy's disgusting I am it's, I like Jonah Hill I like Jonah Hill a lot I think it's fantastic uh, but I'm, what I'm saying is he thought that it, if you watch Superbad the whole movie's them trying to get laid oh they, fine they, but it's fine to you but now these new people that new people okay but don't these new people but that's what it's going to be taking over the planet <laughs> these new people these new people but you know what I'm saying yeah, younger people I know but I mean, own it like come no, on I do don't. think that as time goes on I do agree and not just because I mean I can't hardly wait then include it I mean you know maybe slightly less problematic than Animal House but I think as time goes on even like the kids who are like in elementary school high school college now watch probably both the movies we're talking about and are like, what the fuck? You guys watch this? Like, this is problematic AF, as the kids say. Yeah, as the new people say. Actually, this is what I want to ask you. This is kind of feeds into what we're talking about. The fact that you're a you're a lovely woman. Thank you're, you. You're Thank female. you. Oh. No, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, no, so my question is this. that The reason that a lot of that stuff has changed is because of what's going on now. You realize that women were people? Have been no, but the whole here's time. the thing. Like nobody, that's that's just what I'm saying. Like you're, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, 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 that's the problem. You're not. You're not, yes, you're not yes. equal. <laughs> no, what I'm you. saying is that there was people that always thought that, but then there was like right. things they thought were silly and funny that might have been misogynistic or whatever it is. Do you think like the fact that that's changing is better for entertainment? Like do you, the fact okay. that. Can't hardly wait. Like some or or Animal House, they're going to watch it and they're going to. It's more of the, yeah. the racial stuff. I, I do, I do understand what you're asking. I feel like I mean, this could be a whole other like bonus episode. We could talk about just this question for 45 minutes. But I think it's impossible. You could not draw a line in the sand in it. Everyone's going to have a different opinion. But do I think it's better that? There are sensitive, more sensitivities to you know, yeah. see misogyny and racism and homophobia and you know, et cetera, et cetera, in movies. movies. I do think it's better that we are drawing, moving the line towards like these things are just not, even if 
you watch it and you're thinking, oh, I know it's just a joke and it's funny. I know it's a joke and it's funny because that guy said the N-word, but we know he's not supposed to. And those guys on camera are beating him up, so it's okay. I still but think it's okay that's, that we're not... We could make a no, whole but I'm saying find, the, be- find the better find a better joke. More, you can use those as topics. Just find the well, better right. joke. And there's still people... It's like you might have always been like a woke, wonderful person, but there's plenty of people no. who aren't. <laughs> and if they're seeing I the that... Clan. I was in the clan growing up. You have to... Then, you know, people watching Animal House, there's plenty of people who just thought... Okay, there's nothing wrong with this because I'm seeing sure. It in this movie. I mean, but that also, you can't but I, stop but you doing are, it. That's not the intention. Desensitized. You do become desensitized. I started swearing. I used to never swear until my f- best friend from growing up, Lindsay, and I started saying the f word all the time one summer just to joke about how stupid people sound when they say the f word all the time. And now I say the fucking f word all the time because I became desensitized and I became. That's just like a silly example of what seeing that type of stuff in oh, art can, can it influence do. You? Yeah, it yes. Is. I because mean, I just think we could never like completely draw the line at you know. I mean, again, this could be a whole debate but yes I do think it's better that I do think it's good that we are drawing a line in certain you know I think I I don't think you're wrong I just think I don't think you're wrong but I think that the tension here's the thing the reason why it becomes a problem is because you can't take away all the tension out of comedy so if you have com- if you oh, have sure. a show right. where sure. everybody's getting along and nobody's offending anybody the comedy gets stripped out of that and that's what I mean the, one of the one of the silliest examples is that Seth Green example yeah. like that shouldn't that should never be a thing where that's going to influence uh, it, the, whatever kind of act, you know, whatever kind of racism is going to yeah. that, that's not going to perpetuate it's not the butterfly effect of that it's yeah. not going to perpetuate harmful deep South oh, fucking well, uh, 60s maybe, racism. It's just going to make some some idiot maybe go, oh, he, he said the yeah. N-word. That's the joke. That person's just an idiot. But everybody else is going to go, yeah, we know you don't say that, but it's funny you caused the tension there. Well, that might Especially be a bad example. That's ago. probably a bad example. Bad because example, because, but, yeah. because in the movie they say that's bad, but the example you guys gave from Animal House about... Um, and shmo- like, yes. That's an example the where like, why saying? do we need that joke? That is just like totally. putting down... And then to your point, Andy... Um, yeah, it's like then make those jokes, but let's change the way we're making the jokes. Let's actually make it make a commentary and be funny and be smart instead of just like I'm using a racial slur for no reason or I'm making I'm you know putting down a woman for no reason you know yeah, other yeah. than just like it's funny to tell a woman to go to the kitchen. It's like well yeah we can make a joke about yeah, misogyny, not- but let's make a smart joke as a commentary about misogyny instead of just look guys be misogynistic <laughs> of course I'm gonna tell my wife to go to the kitchen yeah. this, this episode went way different than I thought it was <laughs> <laughs> we have to wrap up soon we have to wrap up soon and I, well, you we can't really hardly got, white I, <laughs> <laughs> hey I, I think we solved racism uh, I mean if three white people were gonna do it it was this trio <laughs> No, all right. Let's get let's get last arguments okay. in because you're both more of the uh, oh. defenders of these things. <laughs> well, and you, honestly, without saying that, it's just a classic, which is such a go to okay. thing. Tell us why it's better than Ken Hardly Wait. Uh, I, I agree with you. I'm just saying that you know, a I think it's a just a flat out funnier movie, hands down. Better acted, better written, better directed, um, funnier again. Mm-hmm. And I guess repeating. I'll use all the. That's all I really need. That's all right. There you go. That's true. Generate uh, cross generational again. I mean, legendary actors. I think you can make. I think I'll, if I have to be on Andy's team for this one, you can make the argument. It had. It, it's it was legendary. Harold Ramis. It's lasting. It lasted longer. Doug Kenny. John so, Belushi. So nobody's really talking about. Can't hardly wait. No but people. But I, as when Except we were Chelsea. kids, when we were kids, people would bring up Animal House. Animal House was like mentioned. You like, you have to see Animal House. I don't think anybody because of how kids are today. Nobody's saying to them, you have to see Coward. When, and we, we haven't done this in a while, but I mean, it flip test every time. If I, I it's on, I go, ah, I gotta watch Animal I'll House get, now. So do I. But I go Whereas to both. Can't hardly wait. I just I go to both. That's how I flip me test and my friends, are, we just hang out in different circles because my friends and I do yeah, still talk that's... about Can't Hardly Wait and do still quote <laughs> it. And if it's on, I watch it. And I'm going to wrap this up in two words. Chip McNeely. <laughs> we got well, McNeely. Was, unfortunately, you still lose. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what to tell you. People are going to get mad about this. Match. I think they're just immediately going to go Animal House. But I yeah. think there's going to be a lot of people that say, I "No, think, I relate." I, 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 I think you're underestimating how much if. 
people who feels passionately about can't hardly wait as I do, like how passionate we are about it. it but was, I, I remember not it was argue it, it should out. go in a certain category. Like I'll you know concede that, and I don't feel passionately like I don't really love Animal House. It just never like I'll tell you this much for, with it. But sorry, sorry. Yeah. I'll tell you this much for can't hardly wait. And this is my last point on it. Better love story can hardly wait. That's Him true. trying to get the girl he's loved for yeah. four. Like, yeah. oh, to I know how that it. feels. Oh, can't hardly Twenty-one wait. years. Go ahead, spoil it. So, no, yes, <laughs> go ahead. Spoil it. To know how that feels. Like to know that. Like when you're yeah. into somebody like that. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I I do. Do. And it's Jennifer Love Hewitt. That's what's plays at the end. It's, it's Love there. Hewitt. I do like how though in Animal House you do find out you do uh, get closure on what everybody became. You know what I mean? You get the. They do it in they can't really wait. Can't really wait. Oh, really? Well, I just don't. Forward, like, I don't they, remember. Uh, it's like it's sort of like what happened. Like I feel like within maybe a year. You know, yeah, it's not like they it. do it like twenty years later. Yeah. As long as it's not American Graffiti. <laughs> did I talk about that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> don't I like, even get them started. On well, no, no, no. Right well, now. I already mentioned on the show a couple weeks ago. American Graffiti ends. It's a very it's, depressing. It's, note. A, it's the movie is very depressing because the end just ta- two of the main characters like. One dies in Vietnam, one dies in a car wreck. And you're like, I well, just watched them just drive around for oh, hours. That's a know good... What I'm not going to do tonight do... anymore. I would just watch American Graffiti. We did openings. Did we do endings? We're going to have to do good, sad endings. Best endings? Defend we your we'll do best endings. endings. Thank I'm... you so much for... Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I'd like 10,000 marbles, please. <laughs> <laughs> Neither so my right <laughs> That's one of the That's funniest great. Nick DiPaolo jokes of all time. What does he say? He goes, he goes, my parents are getting so old. He's like, I call my house now. I talk to my mom. She's like, it's the Who Died hotline. She starts rattling off like the end of like Belushi at the end of her plan. She goes, Mr. Coletti, dead. Niedermeyer, <laughs> dead. Mr. Sampson, dead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Uh, thank you so much for doing this, Chelsea. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you guys for having a me. A pleasure. Plug, plug, plug away. Okay, check me out on all social media platforms at the Chelsea White. Not because I'm an asshole, just because there's already an at Chelsea White. Oh, we got to so get her. At the Chelsea White. I tried to get in touch with her. She I also tried said to, like, the N word, so let's change yeah. her now. Let's cancel this bitch. <laughs> don't spread that <laughs> about her. She's a lovely. She's a mother. Um, at the Chelsea White on all platforms. I have a web series called Show Me Your Kitty, which you can find at Show Me Your Kitty. Com, and also every Wednesday night, <laughs> wink, <laughs> every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, I go live on my Instagram page at the Chelsea White and host a weekly talk show in my living room called What Fantastic. a Delight with Chelsea White. So tune in. I love it. Thank you guys for having me. Thank yeah. you, Defenders, for having me. I hope, oh, they look, I Defenders hope are gonna we love can you. still be friends. No one felt polarized by my They're opinions. a good group of people. They don't, okay. they don't. I feel it from them. Shout yeah. out to Ashley. My good dudes. <laughs> They're good, 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 good people. Uh, Andrew uh, Fury. Uh, this weekend at the Comedy Cellar all weekend. Uh, October dates on the road. Long Island, November. Uh, headlining the Fat Black Pussycat, November 7th, Thursday. Uh, Omaha, Nebraska, November 14th, 15th, 16th. The Funny Bone. AndyFury.com for all my dates. At Andy Fury on all social media. And... I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, that's, that's it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I am at Shawnee Time on Instagram and Twitter. This weekend, I am already there. By the time you're listening to this, I'm in St. Louis at the Funny Bone in Westport. So if you would like to come check it out, let me know. Come up to me. Let me know your defender. Uh, and then October second, I'm doing a show at the Fat Black Pussycat uh, at 10:30. It's a late one. Come on out. You have a bunch of defenders, and we will see you. Uh, next time, next week, and thank you guys so much for listening. Remember, tweet at us at Defend Your Movie on Twitter. Also, uh, email if you'd like Defend Your Movie at gmail.com. But if you tweet, we'll respond. Tw- uh, as, matchups. Same emails, but yeah. What? Give us matchups. Meet and greet uh, ideas. Tell your friends. We're going to do the live one. We'll have you watch the movie. We should do a, we should do a big movie watch. Yeah, it's been about a year oh, since so the live fun. one. Yeah. We're due for another. Yeah, we're due for another. So definitely let us know what you think about the show. Tell everybody. Uh, subscribe, review, do all that jazz, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.